Hello, Zuzulpa. Uh, I am trying to find out if the sounds are working again. I hope it is. Uh, not started and no sound. Okay, can we? Can we all hear me now? I'm my audible. My audible. My sound is my sound is working for you all. Who's viewing the video now? Sounds working. I just need a confirmation from someone viewing this video now if the sounds are alright. Please. Sounds audible. Is the sound audible now? Am I audible? Sounds coming through? Am I audible now? The sounds are okay? Sounds are working for you. Everyone watching this video, they can listen to me now. Can so yes, the sound is working. Okay. So I got a confirmation from Susima Malandar. She says the sound is working for her. Ramani Malandar Tata also says it's okay. So let's, I think we can start now. Right. So today's um, class is about um, not the one that you say is now here. But it should be counting, right? So we are doing counting today. Uh, so let me just quickly bring this to counting. Perfect. Right. So this is Nepal Bhasha class five, counting. So how to count in Nepal Bhasha is quite interesting because depending on the number of uh, you know the type of object that you're counting is going to be quite different. The counts, like for example in English, it is actually really comparatively quite simple, right? You can say uh, one book, two books, one elephant, two elephants, uh, one man, two men, and so on. Like one key, two keys, one house, two houses, and so on. So the noun changes, uh, uh, but the count, the form of the count, the number itself that is used is not changed. But we will now see how it changes in Nepal Bhasha. Right. First, to start with this, we need to learn uh, how to count in Nepal Bhasha, the number itself, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and some more bits, which we will now bring it up here. Right, numbers. So these are the numbers that we will be dealing with today, uh, and we will count different things today together, and I would like this session to be quite interactive, as interactive as possible, please. So please comment here with any queries, and also try and less, less, try and, you know, like talk it through learn it, share it, uh, you know, uh, each of these topics that we'll cover today. So in English, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and uh, 10. So as you can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, up to here. Simple, then 20, 100, 200, 30, 1000, 2000. These are the numbers we are dealing with today as a sample. And then in Nepal Bhasha, 1 is cha, cha is one, like you. So cha is one, ni two. Three is suo, four is pe, five is nya, six is ku, seven is ne, eight is chia, nine is gu, 10 is ji, 20 is ni. This is like a longer ni than two. So two, as you see earlier, is ni. 20 is ni, 100 sachi. 200 nisa, for example, 30 would be sweet. 1000 dochi, 2000 nido, and there are other forms. So these are like the most common and frequently used ones that we are we trying to learn here today. So there's no way out other than actually rem remembering these root forms of the number count, which is cha ni so pe nya ku ne jia gu chi. Up to from one to ten. If we could, act, we'll have to actually, uh, in some way, we'll have to mug it up. You know, there's no other way. So, cha ni so pe nya ku ne jia gu chi. From one to ten. So that's all we need to do for today's uh, lesson, today's class. We need to actually remember the, these ten numbers somehow. We can come up with some kind of mnemonic, maybe. Maybe someone can find out a, a good kind of rhyme to remember these 10 numbers. That could be a good project for us. I'll, I'll try from my side too. 
Co ni so be nya ku ni jia gu chi. That's what we need to remember, right? So now, if you say one, it is cha. If you say two, it is ni, and so on is understood. Now, what are we counting? Let's see what we would like to count, right? For example, one of the simplest ones that we count is uh, chagu, nigu, and so on. Like this is this is an object. Like you are counting an object, which is countable and non-living. So that's what makes a big difference in Nepal Bhasha, whether the object you're counting is living or non-living. Okay, so let's start with something that is non-living for us and we, we're counting these numbers. Okay, so counting objects, right here, we will now add uh, numbers here, uh, terms here that are used to count objects. Okay, so firstly, any questions so far? Uh, okay, everyone's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good. Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you. All that. Yeah. Perfect. Now, let's go back to this. Now, we would like to add the first non-living object count, which is most commonly who. Okay, so as you can see here, we're trying to actually... Let me bring out this box. Cha gu. Cha. Cha was one. Gu. So we are actually suffixing this classifier. This suffix gu is added to cha. Which makes it chogu, chogu, nigu, swogu, songu. Nasal sound added here and there in Nepal Vasa, as you experienced in earlier classes as well. To make it like, you know, it, it, it is actually more fluid, fluid when you actually do it. Swangu, pengu, pe and gu, pengu, nya, gu, nyagu, ku, gu, kugu, ne, gu, negu, tia, gu, tiagu. Gu, 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 chi, gu, chi, gu, right? So similarly, if you have like 20, you'll be like ni, gu, sa, chi, gu, ni, sa, gu, sui, gu, do, chi, gu, ni, do, gu, and so on. So let's go back to cha, gu. Like what kind of objects we're talking about here? Uh, let's say cha, gu. Anyone can give an example? Cha, gu, what could... What kind of object we can use? For example, let, let me start, and then and then uh, we can we can help out each other, maybe right. So, for example, you know earlier we learned safu uh, table do. That was the first one of the first lines we learned uh, when forming sentences in the first class itself. Safu is for book, right? Kitab, safu, pustak. Safu in Nepal Bahasa is book. That's why like safu kuti is a library. Uh, safu duku is a dictionary because Thuku is a collection, right? It's, it's, it's a yeah, and Kuti mostly like the building attached to Safu Kuti library, the Safu Thuku, um, you know, uh, uh, dictionary. What else? Uh, Safu is book now understood, right? Let me pick up one Safu here. So I've got a Safu. So if I have one book, for example, here, this one, so there we've got one book here. Sagu Safu. Is that gonna work? Of course it will, right? Yeah. Now, let's do this. Let me actually uh let me actually be and you know, make more of these, for example. Okay? Let me make more of these. How many books are there now? So how will we count the, these two books? Will it be Chagu? Still? No. Two books will be anyone can answer. It's very simple. It's gonna be difficult later on, but we'll start with a very simple one. Chagu is one book. Two books will be anyone watching the video can anyone watching the live video can uh, reply in the comment section of this video, of this live video. Chagu, Nigu. Okay, Susima says Nigu. Perfect, Susima. So we're working out, working out together, right? Good. Nigu. Nigu Safu. Right? Okay, let me now do one simple trick. What I'm going to do is now, I'm going to hide that. And let's make it more difficult. Okay, let me... 
add a few more books, maybe, randomly. Okay, let's see how we do with this. So, how many books I've got so far? There. So, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five books with me. So, how do I count this now? It's not going to be Chagu and Nigu anymore. How do you do is you go back to your basic counts, right? You go to your, your you go back to your basic counts there. And how many you've got? Five. Perfect. Go to that basic one to five and find out what the root number is. It is, as you can see, and Anil has already said, Susima has already commented correctly. So Number five is nya. The count for five is nya. The number nine, the number five in Nepal Pasha is nya. So all we're doing is adding a gu and it is going to look something like this. Nyagu, right? Nyagu safu. Are we correct? Yes, we are. Of course we are. Nyagu, right? Nyagu safu. Five of the books, right? Is that okay? Right. Let's get rid of these books. So how, how, how are we going to say if of, um, maybe for example we have um, 20 books that is going to be 20 books is going to be go down nigu nigu saku if we do something like 100 books for example if we have to say 100 books using that the root we go to Sachigu Safu. Is it I missing here? Sachi. Sachigu Safu. Right? I move up there. Right. Okay. Now we will get rid of these. Books for now. Get rid of the books for now. And let's move on to a different one now. A different classifier. Shall we? Yeah. Okay, so a different classifier, for example, would be uh, how do you count something like this? I'm going to give you an image, and you'll have to you'll have to tell me what classifier or what suffix to use in the number that we have here in this list. Okay, so I've got this. Let's see, nice. What is this? A ball, a football, a ball in Nepal Bhasha, and actually. You know, in even in um Kospas in Nepali, it comes from Nepal Bhasha. Uh, a ball in English is Makungwara in Nepal Bhasha. Right? Makungwara in Nepal Bhasha and that also moves on uh, you know it is lent to uh Kaspas in Nepali as Bakundo, if you remember. Yeah, that's a ball in Nepali, Kaspas in Nepali. In Nepal Bhasha is Bakungwara, right? It's a round one round playing object. So how do you count a bakungwara, a ball? It's not tagu. It's not tagu nigu uh, It is going to be something different. How do you count a uh, football? Bakungwara? Someone said bakungwara, correct? Yeah. Now now tell me, so now that we know it's bakungwara or a ball, ah uh, Dominic Tata has answered there. She says chaga. Is that correct? Do you think it's correct? Is it chaga bakungwara? Does it work? Sagu Bakungwara is not working for me. Saga Bakungwara, I think it works. I think it works, right? Yeah. Why we're we using this is like Chagu is a non-living object count. We did that. But Chaga is again a non-living object, Chaga, but that is something like a physically not only countable, but also physically is there as a you know as a as an op as an object with a volume, which is, you know, uh, gen uh, which is generally round, rectangular, cube, with a specific 3D volume, 3D shape and size, you know, that kind of non-living. Because like uh, we could use chagu for uh, maybe a table, chagu table, chagu mitz for a chair, because like you can't really say what kind of uh, shape is a table. Uh, because it's quite it's quite not like it's got uh, various parts of 
uh, the same object like a chair it's got a plane there it's got, it's got a planar surface elsewhere it's got a longer uh, you know protruding uh, shape somewhere so you can't you can't just specify what shape it is but like a, a, a football is a round sphere like it's very close to a sphere it's a sphere um, and maybe a thaga gadi like in the palace a gadi thaga gadi a car it's almost like a solid you know like a cuboid uh, that's like is it uh, not Cuba is that like a um, kind of a, it's, it's got that you know very physical and uh, re almost regular kind of shape right and you call it Thaga Gadi Thaga Bhakungwara let's see how it works here right go right Thaga okay Thaga right now let's um Let's have some more of these, okay? And before we go any forward, actually, let me get rid of this. Let me get rid of this. Done. Right. So, what I want to do now here is two, three, four. But five, eight, um, six. How many have got? Seven, eight. I've got so, yeah, I've got eight. Maybe. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight balls, eight poking water. So, how do I count this now? So, basically, again, go to our counting system there. Uh, someone can answer this. Eight. Perfect. There. See, eight in Nepal Bhasha is cha. So if we are counting Bhakungara as thaga or niga as ga, so it has to be. Someone has already commented there. Chaga Bhakungara. Perfect. Right. Chaga. Eight. Someone said tenga. No, we got eight. So eight would be. Eight number is chia, right? So eight balls would be chiaga, chiaga bhakun vada, right? Perfect. See? Let's have a look at that. Chiaga. That's the number. Chiaga bhakun vada, eight bhakun vada, eight balls works in ga. So chaga, niga, chaga, niga, swanga, penga, nyaga, kuga, nyaga, chiaga, kuga, chiga, and so on, right? Nice. Now, let's again get rid of all these balls from here. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. And then, let's also do that. Right. Now, I'll give you a third example. Okay. Look at this carefully. What is this? Ta da! On my right here. That is a key, right? In Nepal Bhasha, key. So this is also, what we are counting, this is also a good opportunity to learn what the nouns are, you know, what the objects are called in Nepal Bhasha. So a key in Nepal, in, in Khas Bhasha, Nepali, Sato, in Nepal Bhasha is called, what is it called in Nepal Bhasha, anyone? Start with, to. Ta cha, right? Ta cha. Isn't it? Cha. Smaller objects in Nepal Bhasha, generally loved ones, you know, small, tiny little ones. Cha, ends with cha, macha, baby, yeah. Mama cha, small little tiny one, everyone lo loves it. Ta cha, right. So, ta cha, perfect. Someone has answered, Ramin Tata has answered there. Ta cha, yeah, Pranisha is also saying ta cha, perfect, everyone. Everyone has a key in the house, yeah, unless it is all automated these days. So, ta cha, how do you count ta chas? How do you count uh, keys? Is it Chagu Tacha, Nigu Tacha? No. Is it Chaga Tacha, Niga Tacha? No. It is quite irregular, right? It doesn't have a specific shape. So how do you how do you count this Tacha? Anyone? Anyone? Let's see. Someone has someone has uh, commented out there. I'm just waiting. How do you how do you count Tacha? If I have to say one one Tacha, one key, how do I say it? Uh, Pranisha is saying Chop. Chapu, she means chapu. Perfect, Pranisha. That's chapu, right? Yep. 
Hmm. So, tapu. So, what what kind of objects do we call it? tapu? Furnisha, can you can you explain? Like anyone can explain. What, why do we have to use tapu? Why don't we have to say tapa, togo, and togu for uh, for something like a key? Or also, I'll give you another example just to make it, uh, you know, uh, visible, like more comprehensible in the in in, in our in our minds. Why to use pu? Like a flute, a uh, basuri, you know, in Nepal basa, Khas basa, it's called basuri, right? It's called tapu basuri, nipu basuri. Is it? How do? Why? Why do we have to call? Uh, why do we have to use pu for these kind of objects like the one we have here, which is the key? Can anyone say why? What kind of objects is uh, counted with pu? Anyone? What kind of object we count is with pu? You know, it's a non-living object. Yes, it doesn't have a specific uh, spherical or whatever exact shape. Yes, but what kind of object we we, we count as pu with with, with the classifier pu? So that's the answer. That's the question. Anyone? Uh, it indicates length, lengthwise. Oh, French is saying lengthwise. Ramanita is also saying it indicates length. Hmm. Rukmanita is also saying chapu nipu sopu. Perfect. So yeah, if perhaps that's why I'm giving you examples like basuri. It's a flu. It's a longer one, slender object. You know the kind of it has a length. Um, the you know the length aspect, the dimension length is more. Uh, you know, overwhelmingly, it's longer than anything else. It's not wider or round, but it's longer. Right? It's got a length that is more noticeable, noticeable at the first glance. So those kind of objects, you will, I think, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, they need to be counted as pu, sapu nipu, sapu kepu. Yeah, sapu nipu, sapu kepu. Okay, now let's do this very simple uh, exercise that we've, been, that we've been doing. I'm going to give you more keys, and you'll have to tell me what. How do you count that many keys? Is that right? Okay. I've got three, four, five, six. Six keys, for example. Okay, six keys. Um, how do we count six keys now? Simple technique, again. So, six keys. Six. Six is cool. And if we go for this list of poo that is going to be kupu nice word kupu tata six keys is that gonna work i guess it's working right yeah kupu tata perfect that works for us so all we need here actually is this list of one to ten you know or more and then add the right kind of classifier, the right kind of suffix to count that particular object. And we just need to uh, also know not only those 10 or more numbers, we just need to know what is the right classifier, what is the right suffix to use for what kind of object. Longer objects, perfectly, um, you know, spherical or perfectly, um, you know, uh, 3D objects, countable objects, non living objects. Okay, so now let's move on to the next one. Uh, which will be, for instance, uh, I'll give you one more example now. No, I'll give you many more. Okay. Next example, let's make a note of this. Uh, let's say, I'll give you an image, and what is it? First, we'll learn the Nepal Bhasha word for that object, and then we'll count it, and we'll then we'll find out, you know, try and see what is the right classifier, what is the right uh, suffix to use. Okay? So, Ah, uh, no, no, sorry. Da da, right, this one. That's a little cat there. It's a little cat jumping, right? So now, the cat, a cat in Nepal Bhasha is called, I think it's called, um, Tsum, right? No, <laughs> no, it's not, it's not called Tsum. Mouse is Tsum, right? Yeah, what, what is cat in Nepal Bhasha? Anyone? What is cat is in Nepal Russia? Anyone? Maka? No. Maka is monkey, right? 
好炸 ，yeah， perfect， two answers already there， Anil and Vanisha， 好炸 ，yeah， again， loved one， 炸 ，it is always a part of the family， right， always lives with people in the house， loved one， 炸 ，ends with 炸，好炸 ，Robin Dada is already already uh coming to say more， perfect， yes， so if we have to count， 好炸 ，cat， dog， rat， mouse， rabbit， frog。Or even a man, a girl, a boy, any living, living thing now, a living, a life, a living uh, thing will be counted using. You know what was the word uh, we learned earlier as well for body, ma, ma puja, right? The worship of the body and soul. Yeah, so ma, the same ma for body, for living body, is used for counting uh, living. Uh, Things, sama, nima, sama, kema, and so on. Yeah, such a right. I'm hiding this quickly, so that now I can ask you the next question, which is, if I have, for example, and three cats with me, right? If I have three cats with me, and they're jumping here and there, right, like this, keep jumping, three cats. How do I count three cats? How do I count three cats? So simple again. We go back to our um, table here on on my right and go for three. That is three. So, and then what do we add? More, right? Because a living living being. So more, and then it's gonna be. Anyone answered already? So more, yes. Everyone has answered it already. Everyone is so smarter than me, man. Yeah, we should change roles here, man. So, soma, right? Soma. You know that? That is soma, right? Three cats, soma, soma about that. But you know, like when, like in English, uh, when you say more, when when there are more than one plural noun, cats. How do you say cats now in the Bahasa? How do you say cats? There are two ways, but there's just one way for each type. Yes, but living and non-living. Now see, cats, cars, buildings, elephants. For living and non-living in English, it's the same way, adding s. But we add something different here. For more than one cat, we will say. Sisma says swam bahuja. Yeah, correct. You can do it also saying swam bahuja, swam bahuja. Yes, three cat. But if you had to say cats, more than one cat, Suma Bhauja is three cat, right? If I had to say three cats, Bhauja Ping, I'm really saying Bhauja Ping, isn't correct? Let me go there saying Bhauja Tog. Let me go there saying Bhauja Tog. So there is a little bit of confusion here about the, the, between these two. To and Ping, as I said, there are two ways, right? Adding To and adding Ping. In English, we're adding S, so simple, everywhere, living, non living. Here, we're, we're saying we're adding either ta or pin as a suffix of the nouns in Nepal Bhasha. Generally, for living uh, for living beings, we do add pin, right? Uh, but I think it's more familiar to uh, say bhautata, right? Bhautata. I think that's more familiar. Yeah. So bhautata. Mm. It's not. Does it speak? No. Maybe this is for something uh, living beings who can actually speak up for themselves. It makes some. It moves. And it makes some sound. It doesn't really speak to us. Right? I think that could be one of the differences that we can use to, uh, you know, decide which class, or which which suffix to use. Hotato is definitely correct. I think. Yeah. Let's get rid of the cats. They're making more noise now here. And now let's move on to the next image. Next example, I'll give you. Uh, and then quickly, you'll have to tell me what is the suffix to use to count these objects or like or whatever. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to invite uh, the president of America, Donald Trump, here. He's, he's very, uh, he's the most popular, I guess, one of the most popular people who give speech. Okay. Ta-da! Here. 
So, welcome Mr. Trump. Right. So he's uh, giving a speech here. He's saying something. He's got something to say. So, uh, you know, uh, things to say. There's not a single word, uh, maybe in English, but I don't, maybe I don't remember yet. But in, in, in Kospas and Nepali, something to say, if I have something to say, you know, uh, in Kospas and Nepali, I would say Kura. Right? Ramro Kura, no Ramro Kura. Right? Yeah, someone said Makura is not Ramro so not so well, not Ramro Kura is less. So he did just by this. Okay, Kura is something I want to say. My speech, my, my, the top, you know, the topic, is some, some kind of thing, I, something I, I want to say is my, my Kura, right? My opinion, my, my thought, my expression, whatever. You know, so my say, that is the word in English, right? My say, right? Mero Kura in Kaswasa, in Kaswasa Nepal. Kura. In Nepal, Basha, Kura would be Khan. Right? Like earlier we said Bukhan and Bakhan. Bukhan is news. Bakhan is a story. Khan is Kura. Something I want to say. Right? So that's why it's like Bukhan, Bakhan. Right? Um, Khan is Kura. Now, how do I count like how many things I need to say? I want to say here. Maybe uh, we've got. Um, Maybe we've got your uh, Donald Trump uh, and maybe I've got some more speeches by Donald Trump, right, here, for example, yeah, everyone likes him, he likes to listen to him probably, makes fun of him, makes memes, he's very popular. Ta -da. Ta -da. And three, four, five, six. Uh, we've already done six, right? Before, let's do something different. Seven, maybe. Yeah, seven things I want to say. I got, I got to count. Con, seven, seven of them. Someone is saying tabu con. Uh, so any answers? How do I count how many things I need to, uh, how many, how many times I have to, Chata Khan, that's the right answer, Robin Tata, Chata Khan, isn't it? Chata Khan, Nita Khan, Sutta, there is another uh, su suffix, if, if it's about Khan, Kuda, right, things I need to say, it is going to be Ta. There it is, Ta. Chata Khan, Nita Khan, and so on, right? So that one, that one, and so on, right? All these Donald Trumps are going to tell you so that one, that one, so that one, that one, that one, that one, and so on. Perfect. So we have we have got all the answers, right? We can always share our thoughts, our knowledge, and then learn. That's a perfect way to learn, actually. Isn't it? Yeah. Get your Donald Trumps. Bye, bye, Trump. Now uh, we go to the next object. I'm going to show you something else now. What is this? Oh, sorry. What is this? Deva, money, right? So Deva is money. Uh, money is Deva. Uh, that's palm. That just because we are in the UK now. For for viewers from outside the UK or Nepal or everywhere, that's still money. Okay. Uh, hundred something in Nepal would be, but yeah, money. So if we count one pound, two pounds, and all that, you know the word Deva is money as a whole, right? Like 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 we say money. You can't count money. You don't say one money to money. Similarly you don't say one one deva uh, two deva and all that. Deva is like collectively the idea of money. Right? The finances, idea of finances, which is money. But now uh, you know there's another one word uh, and I think it comes from Bengali, you know maybe or Maybe yeah. Uh, even even uh, these days, like the currency of uh, Bangladesh is you know, like the capital is Dhaka, the currency is Taka. Remember, right? And also in uh, some of the Indian regional languages, uh, they they still use uh, Taka, right? With uh, with a uh, baklota, you know, with a 
particular, this this sound, sound do, not do. But in Nepal Bhasha, this version is popular. Uh, we count money as taka, like taka, taka, but Nepal Bhasha versions taka, you know, right? Kalachil, you know, patalo to, taka, right? So uh, taka is countable unit of money, unit of countable unit of theba, and if I have to now count money uh, in, in terms of uh, the countable unit, taka, what do I say now? Netak, uh, net, uh, okay, what do I say is chataka, like it's one, right? One and taka, chataka. Two, right? Ni taka. Three, right? So taka. Four, right? Pe taka. Nya taka. Hu taka. Taka is the currency, is the Nepal Vasa uh, thing for, you know, rupiah, like rupiah is the currency, taka is the, is, is the currency in Nepal Vasa for the buyer. To the unit of counting the money for instance. So we we'll say sataka, nitaka, swataka, tetaka, and so on. Actually, the to sound in a, in a more informal uh, spoken Nepal Bhasha, uh, is even quickly disappearing to to ra. They even say, you know, sarka, nirka, swarka, terka, nyarka in, 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 in core Kathmandu. Uh, um, uh, you know, um, form of speaking uh, Nepal Bhasha, I've, I've heard these as well, it's more familiar. Gurka, Sirka, Nirka, Nyarka, Tsiarka. It changes to Ra, but formally and the standard, at least in written format, is Taka, right? Ta, Taka, Ni, Taka, and so on. Yes, you should think that I said Taka, isn't it? Ta, Taka, Ni, Taka. Tsaba, Diva, Coin. Coin is Chaga Diva, that's what you think that I is suggesting. Maybe that's correct. Chataka, Nitaka, and so on, right? Okay, now mm, let's get rid of the Taka. Let's get rid of the money, which is the most difficult thing to do for most of us now here. Wrong. Right. Now, let's, uh, yeah, have you seen this? Yeah. Chataka, Nitaka, Swataka, Petaka, Nyataka, Kutaka, Nitaka. Chataka, Mkutaka, Chitaka, yeah? yeah? Right, I'll give you one more countable object here, okay? Which is, this is calendar, okay? What is calendar in, um, in, in, in Cosmos and Nepali calendar is Dite uh, Patro, right? Because it's a Patro, uh, like, right? And it is on the Pitta, on, on, the, on, the, on the wall, so it's, not wallpaper, but it's a calendar, is a bitte battery, right? Upper on the bitta. Now, in Nepal Basha, uh, there's a very uh, classical, there's a very um, genuine uh, term for uh, a calendar, which is Naguma, right? It's more related to the astrological kind of sense of saying calendar, Naguma, like with constellations and stars and all that, right? Naguma is calendar. Also, these days, you know, because we are so fond of translating from English, like good morning to Bhimasutta, good afternoon, you know, good, good evening, Bhita, you know, all that. Uh, 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 Jolopa is also like translation of namas, Namaskar, like joining hands and all that, you know. Although we had Tarima, we don't do Tarima and Bhavansar, um, uh, as I said in the first class. Similarly, although we have Naguma as a calendar, uh, we are so fond of translating uh, our words, uh, making new words from existing other words. Uh, we also say, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, like saying Dinanka and all that, in that sense, it is, um, calendar is also called Nilia uh, Po. Po is the document, is the letter of the document. Ni is like every day. Lia is like month. Lia is month, right? Uh, La, la is month, right? Ni la po is the, also calendar, other word for calendar. Noguma is calendar as well. Now, why I'm bringing up this calendar is like, uh, I would like to count, um, I would like to see how do we count the days now here, uh, like one day, two days, three days, four days, how do we go with that, you know? So, how do we do this? Anyone answers? How do I say one day? And how do I say two days? I won't say chagu uh, um, 
din is din, right? So we mean is today, right? So we so we din nigu nigu din sata din no like none of these words, right? How do I count the days? Anyone? Anyone is what an answer there? Sonu, yes, perfect. So nu, right? Nu is the count of the day today, right? Sonu, like ni. Ni ni is every day, like you know. Uh, uh, yesterday was um, Maya Paswa in uh, day to see Mother's face, right? Mother's Day in, uh, in the park. In, in the park. Ni, like bu ni, birthday, like days ni. But when you count the days, it is nu. Okay? So, sanu, ninu, sonu, tenu, and so on. Like this. Nu, sanu, ninu, sonu, tenu, nyan, and so on. Right? Now let's hide it. How do I count uh, 10 days, for example? Let's find. Let's see if someone has an answer. If I have to say 10 days, uh, if I have to say, like, I would go to school for 10 days. G, I, I go to school for 10 days, make it simple, G, I will go to school for 10 days, G, one day is will go, school is, you know, read is bone, remember, the verb bone, and kuti, as I said, safu kuti, book, house, is a library, safu kuti, so, bone kuti, is a, is a place where we go and read, yeah, where you study, the building where we go and study, is bone kuti, school, right? So, G, bone kuti, bone, how many times? G, I want to go to school 10 days. So, how do I say 10 days? Jinu. Okay, I got the answer from Roman, that is Jinu. So, yes, I can say G, Jinu, bone kuti, bone. I will go to the school 10 days. Yes, we are in the lockdown, so it's a dream for students. Well, long for the school but yes 10 days right um nice so let's get rid of the calendar and uh almost we're almost done with the different forms of counting so let's say this it's a frog frog in nepal Vasa is uh Bianca, right <laughs> Bianca. it's a very wonderful word Tsa again see it is in the household this animal is in the household so Tsa, we love it Right. It's a part of the, the fa uh, farmer's life. It's, it's a very important uh, part of life for farmers because it, it makes sounds to, to tell in uh, different um, seasons and all. That's what we all believe in, in our culture, right? It tells us which festivals are coming up uh, and all that. So, Bianca, frog. Why I have brought Bianca here? I'm not going to count Bianca. Bianca is the one Bianca will be summer Bianca because it's a living thing, right? right? Living uh, thing, right? So, summer, Nima, summer. But what I want to do now is the Bianca is uh, smiling, right? The frog is smiling. So Nile is, is the verb for smile, as we've learned earlier. So uh, is smiling, right? The frog frog is smiling. Bianca Nila Tsuana. So if, if it smiles like number of times, couple of times, so if I have to count the times, number of times it is, you know, smiling and laughing or whatever. So how do I do this now? Right? Okay. So... What is the suffix to count uh, number of times? Any 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 deed, any event, any any work is done, any any verb occurs. Number of times you do something, you know. How do you count the number of deeds? How do we how do we count that? Anyone has an answer? How do you count number of times? Something done number of times. We have three Vyanta doing the same thing here. Three Vyanta doing the same thing here. Someone please tell me how many... How do you count number of times? Doing something a number of times. Like I've done twice, twice, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times and so on. How do I count that? See? I've got so many here. Vyantas. There. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine frogs smiling. So how do I say nine frogs are smiling in the Balbasha? How do I count the number of times? Uh, let's see if we have an answer. So many frogs here. I can't. I can't. 
Tucker Nico, Kuh, Susima says, Kuh, yes, Susima, Fansha is also saying, Kuh, right, Tucker Nico, and so on, right, right, so nice. So, how do I say the frog? The frog smiled uh, nine times. I would say, Tucker Nico, Kuh, right, the number of times, Tucker Nico, Soka, Pika. So, the nine would be our nine would be. Here as it is nine go down there in the in the in the in the root table here. Goo. Nine is goo. So guka. Yeah, perfect. I think it works, right? Anyone has answered? Guka biata susima. Guka ramantada. Yes. Isn't it? So frog smiled nine times. How do we see we say this? Is uh look at this. Look at this, look at that. Yes, nine times to book up, right? So, frog, biata, book up, nine times, smiled, nila. Biata, book up, nila, nila. Biata, book up, nila, like the frog, smiled nine times in total. That was a smiley frog, and <laughs> yeah. Like people who smile a lot. Uh, by the way, frogs. Yes. Okay. Frogs are born. Okay. So, Guka Taka, Nika, Swaka, Pekka, as you can see here, right? As you can see here. Taka, Nika, Swaka, Pekka, Nyaka, Kuka, Neka, Tsaka, Guka, Sika, and so on. Sachika. I like that one. Because my mom always tells me, you know, like, you know, mom is like, yeah. So I tell you, I'm going to lie. hundred times I have to tell you, and you still don't listen to me. You don't do worry about what I say. You know, no child does what the parents say, basically. Not even my child, my kids do. But, yeah, so the parents in frustration, they always say, Satchika Dhamma, something. Right? I have to tell you ten, and I have to tell you hundred times, and you still don't listen to me. Satchika, a like hundred times. So we'll leave this for the parents for now. <laughs> we'll move forward. Uh, right, last one for today. I don't have a I don't have a image for this, but let's let's remember this. Um, Pasa Bujaguti UK has entered twentieth year this year. This is our twentieth anniversary year. Remember, two thousand. I mean, like most of you will remember. Some of you won't. If you join later, like me, I joined ten years ago. But then, uh, 20 years ago in 2000, uh, in 2000 AD, so 10 uh, noble gentlemen, uh, they were all men, but, they, yeah, uh, uh, but then there were female uh, members as well, the three members, like Roman and Malamut, as I've been told, uh, one of the first. So 20 years ago, Basavu Zaguchi UK was formed, was established in, 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 in the UK, in London, in West London, actually, to be very specific. Now it's like UK wide, we've got branches everywhere. So, Possible to UK was established 20, 20 years ago in 2008. This is our 20th anniversary. So, how do I say 20 years? Hmm. I've got another good example as well, just, just came in mind, but let's finish this. How do I say 20 years? Uh, firstly, 20. I'm just trying to. Uh, yeah, it helps for us. Um, if I just say someone like Pasaguzi Guti, it's 20 years this year, how do I say in Nepal Basha? You know, like if I had to tell someone at the first day in Nepal Basha, you tell me, it might be difficult for me. Let's, let's, let's help me now here. 20 is ni, like the big ni, right? The longer one. Ni. No answers yet? No one wants to help me, basically. Ni ro. And this says ni ro. Niro, Anu says Niro, uh, Ramantara says Ni Don. Uh, yes, all of these are correct. Sandeep's mom is just sending a message. Uh, I think she says, and Matra auntie is also saying Niro. Maybe. Okay, so yes, let's let's figure this out. Ni Don. Year in Nepal Basha is Don. Don with a that's all this thing, right? Don is, is year. Uh, remember this thing. Uh, 
when the kids are when the child is two years old uh, the festive occasion the ritual we do is the two years birthday two years when we start celebrating the birthday of the child in, in, in the our culture and we say Nirupun right so Puni because like we are counting the number of uh, Punis the number of uh, full moon day uh, full moon days, you know but, uh, and this child has seen two years of full moon days, right? so Nida uh, but that's what some people say Puni Nirupun 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 but definitely Nira is two years Nidon so it is Nidon also to be very uh, clear Bu Din. As I said earlier, Din is the day. Bu Din is the birthday. Ni Don Bu Din. Two years from the date of the birth of the child is Ni Don Bu Din. And this is deformed and uh, you know in Sanskrit they say Abhavamcha could be that. Uh, and they have all the rights to make, make different meanings of this. We call uh, these days people just say in spoken, you know, uh, informal way, Nirupin, Nirupin, Nirupin. The child is Nira now, Nira. The child is seen two years. Nira Budi, Nida, two years. But we are talking about 20 years for Pasapasa to UK. It is no more a baby now. And that is Nida, Nira, Nida. Yes. So, uh, you know, like as Sataka is also in a spoken form, Tsarka. Raw, raw is so uh, like loved sound in Nepal Bhasha and to make it quicker, easier, also uh, deformed from ta to raw in Sataka to Sarka. Similarly, Nida, the da is also like uh, very frequently uh, pronounced as raw uh, as a deformed, uh, non standard deformed spoken Nepal Bhasha, Nira Bhat, Nira, Nira Jula, Nira Kiana is shown two years now, this is he's two years old, right? Uh, Nira. Swara, Swara. And so, if I have to say, Pasapasaguti UK is now 20 years old, I have to say, Pasapasaguti UK, Nida Kiano. Nida Kiano. Perfect. Cheers for the 20 years, everyone. So, uh, yeah, that will be the end of today's class. And we've done it for almost one hour, is it? Yeah, nice. So, if we can count for one hour, and we still have more to count, but this is, we have to end somewhere. Otherwise, Susima and uh, you know, new learners will again complain there in the comments. But I'm so overwhelmed and too much for me and so on. Yeah, let's end it here. But let's not end it here, actually. Let's just uh, keep learning. And I, I want to give you actually like one one quiz, one question that you can answer later in comments. But I, don't, I won't help you with this. You have to find out with friends and family and books or whatever. Or the source. Okay, I'll give you two, basically. One. How do you count houses? So when you do Tawa and you got no, there has to be some other counting uh, suffix for uh, houses. So how do you count houses in Nepal Bhasha? The second would be, how do you uh, count trees in Nepal Bhasha? So house is chen in Nepal Bhasha, the word itself, but how do you count chen? How do you, how do you count, say one chen, two chen, how do you count it, right? And uh, tree is sima, right? Uh, you know, you might have, must have uh, heard of Wangal Sima. Yeah, Sima. Uh, Sima is Hungary. Hungary is a boy. So, Sima is a tree. So, how do you count trees? How do you say one tree, two trees, and so on? That's the second one. So, how do you count houses? How do you count trees? Two questions for you as a quiz that you have to answer in the comments, and we will also help you in the next class, maybe, when I see you again. Uh, with the correct answer but let's find out together and also the good news is in the next class which is like not today but day after tom uh, not tomorrow but day after tomorrow sunday we'll have a guest uh, facilitator guest instructor you know who will help us uh, learn uh, new topics in nepal Pasha. again uh monday we'll take a break and then tuesday we'll have another guest uh, instructor who is also a renowned uh, expert in nepal Pasha. So we'll now also bring guest speakers and guest instructors who are known in their fields in their uh, for their knowledge and for their uh, you know know how in, in the language of Nepal Bhasha. So that'll be a good opportunity, that'll be a great opportunity for all of us to learn from experts and all that. And but we'll try and follow them. So that's all for today. Thank you very much. Yaku Yakusubai.
Thank you. Let's keep counting. Counting days. Perfect. Thank you. Bye.